the city of Seattle, known for coffee, grunge music, and of course, rain. And we're definitely going to get a heavy dose of the last of those three here tonight as you look inside a wet and wild century link field. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle. Minnesota Vikings coming back out here, getting ready for their next drive. You know, week one for them, the loss to Green Bay, 43-34. to Now, before the game, they got good news. The Dalvin Cook news signing to a five-year extension didn't translate onto the field collectively as a team, especially really Charles on the defensive side Aaron Rodgers carved him up with those 43 points and that's where the surprise is not that Aaron Rodgers could carve someone up we know he's capable but Minnesota's defense so proud so good for so many years still possesses tremendous players at every level and picked up Yannick Ngakwe in the preseason but remember Daniil Hunter their best pass rushing defensive end did not play in this game that hurts when you're trying to keep Aaron Rodgers corralled. And now, coming up, it's interesting. They're going to kind of take a tour of the AFC South. They're at Indy, home for Tennessee, and then they'll visit Houston before getting out of the AFC South and traveling to Seattle for their first primetime game of the season. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Cook. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. It was Jaron Reed who got him down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Cousins gives way to Cook. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. Bobby Wagner, the NFL's leading tackler in 2019, there on the stop. Brings up second and seven. Coming up on second and seven. They'll try to throw now. Cousins open here, Adam Thielen. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks 28. 11 yards there, first down. I don't care how you look at it, how you cut it, how you parse it. Adam Thielen continues to be an absolute marvel coming from where he did Division Three football to being one of the top receivers in the NFL. But it's going to be vital for the Vikings in 2020 to keep number 19 on the field, especially since he lost his old running mate, Stephon Diggs, to the Buffalo Bills. And a hamstring injury last year really held his numbers in check. His lowest receiving yardage since 2015. Look for another breakout from Adam Thielen after plays like that. Second and 10. <laughs> Working out of the gun, Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Five yards, now it's third and five. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with confidence as the game goes on. And able to get this down inside the 15 to either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Nine yards on the play and a first down. First down. Minnesota. And the running back position just continues to evolve from what I saw as a youngster when you just took the ball from the quarterback and ran as far as you could. Nowadays, you've got to be able to catch the ball as well. And there were 15 running backs last season, partner. They ran for over 1,000 yards, but only three had 500 or more receiving yards as well. Leonard Fournette with Jacksonville, Christian McCaffrey, of course, with Carolina, and this guy right here, Dalvin Cook. 
A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And here he'll get it down to the seven. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. The 13th play now coming on this opening drive. Here's third down. From the gun, here's Cousins. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. Jamal Adams on the safety blitz, too fast to handle. What's up about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage? How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. Bailey's kick is good. And the Vikings have a 3-0 lead. Well, they didn't get in the end zone, but pretty good balance there on the opening drive between the run and the pass. Yeah, I think that that was probably what they wanted to get accomplished right out of the gate. Throw the ball with success, run it, of course, to set the tone. So who saw the offensive coordinator's play sheet? Probably wrote himself a little note. Exactly what we wanted to do. Probed it early and got it done. it in at the 13. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Back out now come the 1-0 Seattle Seahawks as they beat the Falcons in week one. Charles, 38-25. That game was in Atlanta. Russell Wilson continuing to play at the top of his game. Only had four incompletions. 31-35, over 300 yards, four touchdown passes, no picks, and guess what? He also led the team in rushing, and then he flew the flight back home to Seattle. <laughs> Is there anything that was left that he didn't do in this game? I mean, it was unbelievable. Jamal Adams was a force on defense. You remember the big trade that brought him over? Maybe the next game, Russell Wilson will play safety next to him just to go ahead and do a few extra things. A phenomenal job by him, phenomenal job by Seattle, and for me, it really fit. Remember the fourth and five when they went for it? And he threw the bomb to DK Metcalf for a touchdown. This Seattle Seahawks team, they're very confident, strong, and they've got a huge game in week two. Their home opener on a Sunday night, Cam Newton and the Patriots are coming to town. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. On third down, it's Carson, and he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's a first down following a gain of three. Well, partner, none of these runs individually have added up to a whole lot. Now, three plays, all three short runs, but together, a first down. Yeah, it's amazing how the narrative changes when you string them together. Now, Wilson on first down. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Second and 16. So that'll back him up five. On second down, it's Carson. 
And they won't fare much better here as he maybe gets back to the line. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Shotgun, Wilson. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A real letdown defensively. That was third and a bundle, but they allow the conversion. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 43. Here's Carson. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Eric Hendrick. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sip through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. From the 41, Wilson. And he's going to keep it here. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. That's a gain of six. Brings up third and three. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Hands it off out of the gun. He'll get the first down and more inside the 20. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Chris Carson, 35 yards. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. So they went to the ground game on third, hoping to pick up the first. They also picked up a touchdown. Offensive linemen so used in this situation to having to pass back. All right, you're looking at what it is, third down. They don't care that it's third and whatever. They figure they're going to throw the ball. And when you call a running play, I think you I think you energize them. I think you juice them up because I haven't met offensive linemen yet that likes to pass block more than they like to run block. And they opened up some nice holes there for him, and he took it to the house. After the roughing penalty on the PAT, they'll kick off from 15 yards further upfield. And this one will not be handled. It's into the end zone for a touchback. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out now joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit, even though they wanted the six points. And maybe wore down the other defense. We'll See. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. And they'll work from the 29 on second and six. A give. This is Cook. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. No he has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. First down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. 
Cousins throw complete to Thielen. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Rudolph on the receiving end from Cousins. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Handoff comes to Cook. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And finally taken down at the 34. That good for 19 at a first down. And it's pretty evident when you watch how Minnesota plays, just how important Dalvin Cook is to their offense. A 1,000-yard rusher a year before, the first one the Vikings had since Adrian Peterson was dominating their carries. And having Cook in the lineup for the bulk of the season, that made Minnesota exactly what their head coach Mike Zimmer wanted them to be. A much more physical... And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off inside the five. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. They needed some breathing room. He gave it to him. 11 yards and a first down. Good gain by Chris Carson. Picks up a first down. And you just have to love his running style. Talk about a straight-ahead guy, no-nonsense type of a runner. He's averaged 82 yards a game over the last two seasons and have 1,230 yards on the ground in 2019. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 15, first down Seahawks. Chris Carson has proven to be a workhorse for the Seattle Seahawks, and they continue to expand his game. We know that he can run inside and be a bruising type of a player, but he has surprising speed to the perimeter, and they've expanded his game now by throwing it to him out of the backfield. In 2019, in the top 10 in the league in touches and yards from scrimmage. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That catch good for only a couple. Brings up second and eight at the 31-yard line. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. This complete to lock it. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. It's always interesting when you get ready for a Seattle Seahawks game because when you think of their receivers, you think of these guys going to be 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 225 pounds out on the perimeter. But Tyler Lockett, he shatters all of those thoughts. Much more like a water bug, but maybe their most trusted target downfield. Led Seattle with 1,057 yards last season, operates in the slot and outside, and as tough as any receiver in the NFL. I think we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play, but you know there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson, he'll run it. The rushing numbers for Wilson, maybe down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. Offensively, they liked their situation, so they tried to take a shot downfield, but no one was open. So it was tucking in run time, and he picks up a first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 47. From the gun, it's Wilson. A quick target here, complete to Metcalf. And some space here. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. DK Metcalf, 47 yards. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. And a nice job by him to catch the slant and then navigate and break free. And receivers love slant routes because it gets the ball in their hands so quickly and oftentimes on the move, when they're on the move like that, then they get to use their best asset, which is usually their speed. And their speed sometimes, like this instance, can take them into the end zone.
So not much time to speak of remaining in his first half as the kick's away. Now K.J. Osborne. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And this not an easy situation. You're down early in the elements. You're on the road. How do you get the mojo back? Well, one thing is to remember that as an offensive player, you have a much better idea of what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go than the defender. So in this case, because you know it, you can make your cuts with a little more decisiveness Maybe a second fake, some double moves, things of that nature to go ahead and try and put some pressure on the defense. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. To throw on second and six, Cousins. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. All right, I need you to check my eyes here. This entire unit defensively, I think, has looked really strong in the first half, especially in the secondary. They've been cohesive, fast to the football. We just saw another example arriving there to help knock that one away. The Vikings on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and six. And the throw there going to be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there. They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on the punt. The Seahawks have David Moore back deep. Thirty-six yards on the punt with no return, and it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field, and thus far the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach, and we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, "Hey, have you prepared for this?" And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, "I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well." And he's been right. Well, CD, let's take a moment here and get your thoughts just on Week One in general. Certainly, no shortage of storylines. But I'm curious, after one week, which teams really caught your eye? Well, teams with continuity certainly did. Kansas City, the defending champions, they were sharp in their season opener. As was Baltimore, who, of course, has time. Wilson. Hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And the Vikings pick up the football. So they've got the football, and they'll start right on the edge of the red zone at the 20 yard line. Recovered by Minnesota. First down. Here's the run with Cook. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Viking ball carrier. I think if they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Second and nine. Throwing his cousins. And this is Cook with a grab. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Galvin Cook. From 19 yards away. And the Vikings have made this now a one score game. There are several elements to a well-executed screen pass. This one resulted in a touchdown. It had all of those elements. Yeah, you're so right because you really need the rush to almost get to the quarterback, almost get to the passer. Then you've got to get the ball thrown perfectly, whether it's to the running back, the wide receiver, whoever the screen guy is. And, of course, the blocking has to form in front to get him downfield for the touchdown.
So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. That'll be taken about a yard deep. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. Now, last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So, in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. The throw complete to Dorsett. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. First one day about the Seattle Seahawks offense, they are a run-first group, but when they throw the ball, they want to throw it downfield and sting defenses. And Philip Dorsett provides great speed and a good target downfield in order to get that done. Nice catch there. His speed adds an extra dimension to the Seahawks offense. On the carry. The tackle made there by Harrison Smith. One of my favorite safeties in the league is Harrison Smith. His ability to support in the run game, as we just saw there, that's key, but also can cover deep as well. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. From the gun, Wilson rolling to his right. He's going to take off with it. Number three. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. By Mike Hughes. A one-yard gain brings up third and six. The Seahawks on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This will be third and six. Operating from the gun. Wilson. And able to find Dorsett. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 43. First down, Seattle, 16 yards the game there. At the 43 and defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. From the gun, Wilson over the middle, and it's incomplete. Philip Dorsett, the intended receiver, and it's third down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was all the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Operating from the gun, Wilson. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Shamar Steffen in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And that'll kick and go out of bounds just outside the 15 at the 16-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. The things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? A first down throw for Cousins. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. That huge loss on the sack makes this job much more difficult. It's now second down and 22 yards to go. And a nice pickup as this one gets him to the 10-yard line. That'll net seven yards on the ground, but it'll leave him with a healthy distance still to go on third down. And it's third down.
From the shotgun, it's Cousins. And that is incomplete. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Colquitt on to kick as he sends it away. Fair catch called for. No gimme in these conditions, but he's able to look this one in. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and that will come the offense as they take over. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 47-yard line. Now a second down and six. Wilson. They'll run the screen with Carson. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. Good catch there by DK Metcalf. And when he came into the league, we were all impressed by his physical attributes. Looked like he was chiseled out of stone. This guy's body is one that we all really wanted to have. But as his rookie season progressed, they added more and more to his plate. Now at times, with his size, his speed, and ability to catch the ball downfield, he looks downright unstoppable. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. To throw again is Wilson. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Well, that's a defense coordinator has got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Throwing again here, Wilson. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down pass play. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And Myers able to knock it through. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. So good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. 
Here's Osborne. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Inside of a minute left in the half, does the fact that you're down on the scoreboard influence what you do or, I guess, don't do on this final drive? It certainly does, but what influences me even more is who I've got running my football team out on the field and the weapons around him. Can he make a play? Can he get into someone that we're going to trust to take care of the ball? If that's the case, I might push it a little bit here and try and get something before the half runs out. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Second and eight. They go play action. Cousins. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 35. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Off the play fake, Cousins. This is caught, and he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash, dropped at the one. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the left hash, you'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And Bailey able to knock it through. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So, yes, they'll still be down going into intermission, but the deficit is now made even smaller, very manageable. Yeah, and if nothing haywire happens here in his last couple of precious seconds, they will go into the locker room with a nice bounce in their step, having gotten a little bit closer on the scoreboard. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. This one fielded at the five. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters, as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt, <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. The gain of eight brings up second and two at the 35-yard line. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. From the gun, Wilson. They'll roll him out right. Now he'll pull it down. 
The improvisation gets him only a couple, but that's all he needed. First down. Now, how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Anthony Barr got a real education at UCLA in playing not just his normal position of stand-up outside linebacker, but down defensive end. So he had to incorporate a variety of moves, take on bigger people, so he learned great leverage while he was there. That really helps him when he's trying to stop people running the ball. Born in South Bend, Indiana, thought about going back Back to go to Notre Dame, but you're right. Great career at UCLA and now a great career in the NFL. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll kick it away for the second time. Oh, it's a wobbler here. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. Only 29 yards on the punt there. Definitely not his best. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. Now Cook hit, and he lost the football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. First and 10, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Greg Olson was a big-time pickup for the Seattle Seahawks in the offseason. Spent the last nine seasons with Carolina as an all-pro, Pro Bowl tight end. And did the same thing before that with the Chicago Bears. Now he moves to the Northwest and gives Russell Wilson a big-time target in the middle of the field. And he's going to be stopped just short of the first down marker at the Vikings 30. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. And he finds his man, the tight end, Olsen. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. It's a gain of 15, first down, Seahawks. First and 10. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Second down and three, ball on the seven. They'll try the left side. Carson looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Third down and four. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Wilson now to throw on third down. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Shamar Stephan able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. No doubt that's a very good play defensively right there because you've always got to be aware that he can take off and make a big play with his legs. 
How about the way they were able to contain him? That also tells me the coverage was excellent downfield. Myers' kick is good. But hang on, a flag is down. Now, if it's on the defense, they might decline it and take the points. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Now it's Carson, and he will take this one in for the Seattle touchdown. Chris Carson, his second touchdown of the night, and the Seahawks add on to their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jam, jam, jam. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. The point after threw the raindrops up and good, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Here's Osborne. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Vikings ready to go again on offense. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All came long. They've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They'll contain him to just four, second down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Throwing again on second down, Cousins. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. And now it's third down. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. They're looking for Jefferson, but this is intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. And a terrific return as he takes this thing all the way down near the 20-yard line. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. And they've got the hookup. This is Olsen. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. At the 12-yard line. This is Carson, and he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. Officially, it's no gain on the play, and they'll remain a few inches shy of a first with third down looming. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss, couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. From the gun on third down, Wilson. Here's Carson with a catch out of the backfield. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. 
Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. He's going to take off with it. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Second down, ball on the three. First down marker at the one-yard line. They run it with Carson. And he's across the chalk, into the end zone, touchdown Seahawks. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Seahawks capitalize on the short field as they take it in for six. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone, and in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now, no question about it. And you talk about on his back, he's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? carrying that just as lightly as he does the football. Man, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. Here's Osborne. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm, and really being firm with this team. Add one, tell me one, see, you know, when we're having a tough patch, this two shall pass, this two shall pass, and if I we kept having a rough patch, he said, but you've got to do something <laughs> up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if they can get calm and reassert themselves here. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. We sit in quarter number three out in Seattle, a second and ten now. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. It'll be a pickup of eight on the screen, and it sets up a third down. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big, but in the end, give some credit to the defense, finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A gain of five. First down, Minnesota. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Cousins on first down. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. A step into a different topic here for a second, Charles. You think about all the action that happened on Sunday, week one in the NFL, but Saturday was an important day for a number of players around the league as well. In fact, we might even have a new holiday, call it Extension Day. A number of contracts. Can we make it into a movie? Can we do that? Can we make it into a movie? Yeah. <laughs> Fine by me. Uh, a number of contracts that were crucial were extended, and really it started with Dalvin Cook, five years at $63 million. That was a big one for the Vikings. Yeah, it was, and it's huge for Dalvin Cook because there was a school of thought that maybe they wouldn't do it because of Alexander Madison's presence, but they're going with their big guy. How about that? Just a few minutes later, 
Alvin Kamara, he re up with the Saints. Five years, 75 million. Love that one. A great move for New Orleans. Even better for Alvin Kamara. Yeah, good to be a running back and then switching it to wide receiver. Cooper Cup with the Rams. What was his like three years? Almost $50 million. I think $48 million to be precise. Yeah, he did very, very well. And I love the way that he runs routes and he gives the Rams a great presence downfield. And how about Demario Davis? We got away from the skill position, guys. A linebacker, one of the top ones in the league. He re upped in a big way. Three good years for him added to his contract in New Orleans. First down, here's Cousins. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there, but it'll be second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and ten coming up. Cousins again. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Bobby Wagner, multiple times in all pro, in there to drop him for a loss. But that takes to start to have a good drive quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. He gets this one into the hands of Dalvin Cook. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. He did his best to just get four out of that, but not enough. And now fourth down. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. A 43-yard attempt. Bailey's kick is good. Is and that'll good. get the deficit down to 15. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still got to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. This one taken just inside the 10. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Here's a handoff to Carson to begin the drive. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Brings up second and 10 at the 32-yard line. Here's second and 10. To throw is Wilson. Forced out to his left. He'll try and run it. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. On the keeper. That's a gain of seven. Brings up third and three. And the Seahawks on third down. Five out of nine thus far. Here it's third and three. And they'll run on the inside handoff. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That one good for 14 and a Seahawk first. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. 
And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. The tackle made. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. This throw complete, Wilson finding Lockett. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. The goal for any offense versus a zone defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. On first down, it's Carson. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Yard line. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And the Vikings pick up the football. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They trail by two scores in the fourth, and their defense did its job getting the fumble recovery. And time to see what this offense has left in the tank. Now this throw caught left side. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Now left side on the swing pass. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 15 yards there on the play as they try to chip away at this 15-point deficit. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. Rudolph on the receiving end from Cousins. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. It's a game I love the durability of Kyle Rudolph. He hasn't missed a game for the Vikings since 2014. Always on the field, always contributing. They keep calling him a dependable target. He can be that and more. And remember, in the overtime win against New Orleans in the playoffs last year, who caught the game-winning touchdown? That guy right there, Kyle Rudolph. For Adam Thielen. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Vikings on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. They're up against a third and one situation. And that will be incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll run for it. Cook. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. Dalvin Cook turned away on fourth down. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. He'll drop to throw. And caught left side, Olsen. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football and be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. No, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. 
The throw complete to Dorsett. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Partner, I like that they're staying aggressive on offense because to me, this drive is what is known as a put-away drive. You score here, that might put this one to bed. I like the fact that they're playing with confidence and not playing with fear. They'll run on first down. Carson might have gotten this one down to the 28, and that's all. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. On second and nine. Wilson toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target, and that'll make it third down. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. And the Seahawks on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and nine. Wilson shakes off the sack. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. Jaleel Johnson drops him for a loss of 12, and it also brings up fourth down. Got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area. Evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. So on is Jason Myers. He's hit from as long as 58 in his career. This to make it a three-score game late. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Now, this one now, not over yet, Charles. You've got a sliver of hope on that other sideline. We certainly do, because that would have made it a three-score game, and that probably would have been curtains at that point. But now if they can get down the field quickly and somehow get the ball back one more time, we may have a different ball game. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 40. Now the ball comes loose, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. Well, they show run with three tight ends here on first down. They'll begin the drive with Carson, pushing forward for three up to the 48. Carson Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. From just shy of midfield, Wilson stepping up. He's going to keep it and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. Now that was a whole lot of open space out in front of him, wasn't it? I'm telling you, Brandon, when things are going right, they are going right. And everything has been going their way for the most part. I saw that lane start to develop. Boom, he took advantage of it. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles, so just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. To throw again. Wilson. That's complete into the hands of Carson. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Makes it third and four. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and four. From the shotgun, Wilson. He can run for it, and he will. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. That is an absolute backbreaker. That was a design passing play. Wasn't a draw. You think you got him stopped. Good coverage downfield. And he's able to pick up the first with his legs. Defensively, that kicks into your psyche and hurts a little bit, doesn't it? It certainly does. And, and here's the thing. Anytime you give up a first down, it hurts you psychologically. But it hurts more when they get it this way because you've covered everything he didn't have any place to throw the football he takes off running 
and picks it up anyway. And now you have to stay on the field for an extra set of downs. And really could have used that stop trailing here in the fourth. Behind the chain, second and 12. You can't block me. You can learn quick. You can't block me. Kill, kill, kill. Here's Wilson. And Olsen over the middle. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 16 yards, a first down. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down. If they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up, that'd be the time to do it. Now Wilson on first down. His pass caught at the four. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. A, six -yard a gain of six there on first. Second and four at the Vikings' four-yard line. Four yards remain for second down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. From the gun, it's Wilson. He'll check that down to Carson. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Here's Jason Myers. He gets set for the Seahawk field goal. This to make it a three-score game late. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. So with that, you figure that ah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen, and you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? Osborne. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. The Vikings head out to take over once again. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for Pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out of here and do something some <laughs> other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. From the gun, here's Cousins. That one into the hands of Thielen, complete. Cousins. That catch good for only a couple. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. To throw again on second down. Cousins. That'll be complete to Cook. 
And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. First down, Vikings. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Cousins now to throw on first down. That's complete to the receiver, Thielen. That catch good for only a couple. Well, they brought the pressure, and that meant man coverage behind him, so he's still able to complete the pass. Even as he took the hit, and that's what you have to do because I was just talking with a coach the other day, and he said, look, it's not always going to be pretty back there. You're going to have to give me completions. Even when you're taking some hits, sometimes you have to be your own blitz control, for lack of a better term. Got to make completions step up and make those throws, and he did that. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration, the body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. They'll throw again, Cousins. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And no move to get the offense off the field. Despite failing once, they're going to go again here on fourth down. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49-yard line. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Wilson on the keeper. Tonight, so the victory here for Seattle, and it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage offense sells tickets, defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Held them to just a field goal. That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.